know, let me let me introduce myself. I'm Sharp Shar Spec Pakniak. I'm the executive director of and the founder of a program called Horizons for Girls. We mentor middle school and high school uh, female students, typically the students that would be called at risk, uh, trying to help them navigate life. So definitely a challenge sometimes, but also very rewarding. What's exciting for me is January is National Mentoring Month. And I think that gives us a chance to shine the spotlight on some great program that really goes on. I'd like to introduce Denise, and I'm going to let you introduce yourself a little bit because I worked for many years with Tim, and I, I'd really like to know a little bit more about who's, who's Denise, uh, where'd you come from, what What's your vision? So I'm going to okay. turn it over to you, talk about yourself, talk about Big Brothers, Big Sisters, uh, talk about some things that you've got planned. Obviously, we're dealing with COVID, so that definitely affects what we do. So, and we've got some exciting news about what happened in the evenings. Well, thanks so much, Char. I appreciate you having me today. Um, I am Denise Whitstock. I'm the CEO for Big Brothers Big Sisters of Sheboygan County. Um, I took the role, uh, was, was given the role, I should say, um, in May of 2017 when Tim Caker retired after 42 years. Um, I was born and raised in the Sheboygan area. Um, but left shortly after high school and uh, did some uh, college and uh, post-secondary education in um, the Phoenix, Arizona area and returned to Wisconsin about 21, 22 years later uh, in 2016 with my husband and two small children. Um, I had spent my first, probably the first 15 years of my career, I had worked in the for-profit arena in international sales and marketing. Um, but I always found myself in whatever company I was with kind of drawn to that corporate social responsibility piece of the puzzle. And I found myself really helping organize initiatives, uh, team walks, ways that the company could contribute and, and give back to the community. And in 20, uh, in 2009, I went back to college again uh, for a second master's degree in nonprofit management and leadership and um, found that uh, it really was a very, very unique blend of my skills and my passions and uh, was fortunate to uh, be offered a management position at Phoenix Children's Hospital, um, which was kind of unique. Uh, I managed volunteer services and animal assisted therapy actually. So wow. volunteer services is a, a, was an operational, uh, operationally funded department and animal assisted therapy was completely funded by philanthropy. And so I was able to not only hone my skills in volunteer management, marketing and community engagement, but also really leverage what I'd learned in my master's program um, about the philosophy behind philanthropy, um, engaging the community in a, from a philanthropic standpoint, and um, tying all of those pieces together for positive outcomes for kids that were being treated in the uh, level one trauma center. And um, when we came back to Wisconsin, uh, I, I worked for a period of time for the United Way in Manitowoc County and then heard of the opportunity with Big Brothers Big Sisters in Sheboygan County with Tim's pending retirement. And um, having a chance to lead an organization, one, you know, serving, when you work in the nonprofit sector, obviously there are many, many causes that you find incredibly important, but serving youth is really um, where my passion lies. And uh, Big Brothers Big Sisters obviously is an organization that leverages a very large volunteer force, which was where my expertise had come into play. So it seemed like a really great opportunity to blend my experience, my passion, and really affect some change in the community that I'd grown up in. Um, Getting to know Sheboygan County as an adult, having left it as an 18-year-old bright-eyed girl, was uh, was really interesting and, and different. And I quickly learned that Sheboygan County 
has the same social issues and challenges as anywhere else in the nation. Um, it, here, it's just proportionate by population. And um, as I raise now three small children in this area, I really wanted to see how I could leverage my skills and talents to affect some positive change for kids. Um, and uh, our organization has uh, really gone through quite a transformation in the last uh, four years, particularly. As a national federation, we've had a rebranding exercise take place because um, on a nationwide trend, we saw that volunteerism was on the decline. The number of kids we were serving was on a decline. And we really were able to identify that uh, a lot of that had to do with a lack of a decline in relevance. Um, younger generations really weren't seeing and understanding the benefits of uh, more formal, quote unquote, mentoring. And, um, and Big Brothers Big Sisters as a brand uh, had lost a little bit of relevance among some of the younger generations. And so in 2018, Sheboygan County, as the oldest Big Brothers Big Sisters in Wisconsin, very happily uh, re launched a rebrand. And um, we've embraced the new vision for the organization, which is uh, that all youth have uh, the ability to reach their full potential, whatever that potential may be. Um, that's one of the things I love about this organization is we are spectators and supporters along a child's journey to whatever they're meant to become as an adult. Um, if you want to become a plumber, let's do it. If you want to become an astrophysicist, let's do it. If you want to become any number of things in between, that's what we're here for, uh, is to support you and give you, try to help give you some of the resources and confidence and tools to help get you there along the way. Um, we have had the, um, the good fortune of uh, lots and lots of experience in our organization. We've had, since, since I joined the group, we've had several longtime employees retire and share with us uh, decades of experience and, and intellectual capital uh, and knowledge and relationships. Uh, we've had some amazing new folks join our team. Um, and we have uh, most recently, of course, if we talk about 2020, because that's what's still on everyone's mind, um, I think we've really seen how important and how absolutely vital maintaining human connection for kids really is. Um, as we have lost, as kids have lost their main social connection, which is school, um, in many instances, that's what they have. They don't have other social outlets. They've lost school. They've lost after school activities. They've lost sports and clubs. Um, but we found we were in a very unique position because they didn't lose their big and they didn't lose us. We were very quickly able to add technology to options to our, uh, to our offer them to our participants so that they could remain connected. Um, we help teach people uh, how to use certain devices and cameras and, and things like that. Uh, we helped provide technology to families that didn't have access. Um, we work with many of the kids, as you described, who might be labeled at risk in some way, at risk for not succeeding academically, at risk for um, you know, food insecurity or unstable housing, at risk for trauma or abuse. And one of the things that we found very quickly was access to technology was a challenge for those families. And so we were able to add, enhance, uh, I don't like to use the word pivot anymore because it's been used so often, but we were able to very quickly take a moment, assess where, uh, what we could still do and, and then move forward with those things. So we've transitioned, um, we actually added four people to our team during the, the 2020 calendar year. Um, we've uh, now grown to a staff of 10 and relocated to a new beautiful location in downtown Sheboygan. Um, we have uh, really been able to dig deep and expand the relationships we had, not only with parents and, and littles and kids, uh, but with the bigs that we serve. So we serve roughly about 700 people between uh, all of those parties. And what we found was during 2020, we were one of the few trusted resources that each one of them knew that they could turn to and ask questions, 
express fears, um, wonder what was next or what might, what might be out there for them. And so we were able to help uh, families and bigs in a way that we just hadn't quite done before. Um, all the while trying to maintain a focus on keeping kids connected to their bigs, keeping them connected to safe, trusted adults, um, keeping them connected to, and the family connected to resources to ensure that they had household supplies and food and support or, or resources for knowledge when it came to housing stability, rental assistance. Um, we helped with funeral preparations. We helped with prescription refills. We helped with all kinds of things. So um, I think it really opened our staff's eyes to how important we are in the family safety net, so to speak, for the people we work with. Um, but what we really saw by the end of 2020 is how incredibly important um, us being a consistent figure um, and a consistent voice in those families really is for kids. Um, they, uh, kids are struggling. Uh, it doesn't matter. I have little kids who are wondering why they can't see their friends in preschool. Um, and for other kids that uh, have lost that connection, have uncertainty, have been spending time alone because families are working. Um, it's a challenging time. And so we're, we're really hoping that the collaborations we've deepened with other partner agencies in the community, um, the plans we have for growth and expansion, uh, the recruitment we've done to have bigs in the wings waiting, uh, that we're ready and prepared to help serve and support kids, particularly um, from a stability and mental health perspective, once the world looks a little bit different again, and we're able to start spending time together. Excuse me, what happened on Monday evening? Monday evening, uh, you and I got to join um, Christina Singh from Boys and Girls Club uh, to uh, have bestowed upon us a proclamation by Mayor Mike Vandersteen from the city of Sheboygan uh, proclaiming January National Mentoring Month, which was very exciting. Um, I, I think uh, we're, we're really excited. We've nominated uh, Mayor Vandersteen to the Mayor for Mentoring Initiative, which is a nationwide initiative led by mentor.org. Um, he has uh, had a long history with our organization, um, having served on the board in the past and understands the value of a mentor, just like uh, all of us, if we all think back to coaches and teachers and scout leaders and, and uh, people in our lives, colleagues, uh, supervisors, we've all had mentors along the way that have helped make us who we are uh, and shape our, our own leadership and success. And he supports the concept very strongly. And I'm excited to be working um, very closely with the city of Sheboygan, uh, county executives, the police departments, and law enforcement around the community to really um, spread the message of how important uh, having a mentor can be to a child's future. It's, it's priceless. Um, you know, when I talk to the students and they share um, the different things that they really appreciate, uh, we've been in existence uh, this coming school year will be our 10th school year that we are doing what we do. And um, they stay with us. Uh, quite a few of our students have graduated the program. Um, they continue to come back. They are now trained to be peer-to-peer -peer mentors. Oh, that's um, wonderful. And, and it's fun because... I'm a grandmother, so I can I can share my insight with a student. But when a peer shares the same thing I'm thinking, it, it they listen, they sit up and they they pay attention, and that Absolutely. is awesome. Um, I was sharing with you uh, right before we started. Uh, one of the students who is now a peer to peer mentor. Um, is actually completing her citizenship now. She's married. She's a mother. Uh, she has completed some college, and she's going to be going back for some more college. And she served in the AmeriCorps. 
And when she started the program, she was on track to, to quit school. Um, you know, in the family, she is Hispanic and the family did not feel there was a value to education. Mm -hmm. um, so she was going to get married and have babies. And that okay. was it. And so, you know, to make that transition for her and the family um, was very rewarding. Mm -hmm. um, it's exciting. One of the things we've got coming up, uh, I think it's mid-March, is we're working with Mead Library. And my students are going to be reading to the little kids some books. Um, and I have two students, including Guadalupe, who is going to read the book that she's picked out in English and in Spanish. Oh, that's um, so I think that's going to be ex exciting to be able to offer that choice um, to the toddlers. So I'm excited about that kind of thing. Sure, um, absolutely. Well, it, it says something about how impactful um, the program has been. And, and we've all been teenagers before. You don't always realize what's good for you at the time. And you don't always want to hear what's being uh, the, the knowledge that's being bestowed on you at the time. Um, but it, it says a lot for for participants in the program to be able to take that pause and understand that there's been value there and I'm a better person because I had this person um, and then make the decision to want to pay that forward. That's really exciting. It is. I mean, I've been uh, invited to uh, graduations, to weddings, to baptisms. Um, it becomes a family. Mm -hmm. And that's exciting. I can remember a few years ago, there was a substantial fire in the south side of Sheboygan. And we got together the next day and two of the students said, we've got to do something right now. And they went door to door and collected toys and clothes and oh. uh, food items uh, for those families that were displaced by that fire. So that to me says a lot because again, it's a population that the general public sometimes wants to dismiss. Sure. You know, they're the troublemakers. We don't want to deal with mm -hmm. the, those children. And that's that's not right. Sure. Um, what's, what's been a challenge obviously this year is COVID. And as we're working with our students now, we are doing everything virtually. We uh, meet with students as a group in Zoom, and then we also offer meeting with a mentor one-on-one. -on -one. I have one tutor, and she is just so excited because we've got uh, an aut autistic young lady. She will graduate this year, and she, again, you know, the, the school system even said, nah, we're not sure how far she's going to go. And it's okay, she's disabled, she's got services. And this young lady said, no, I, I want to graduate. And the tutor is meeting with her online twice a week to make sure that she completes the assignments. And that, that's exciting. I mean, yeah. you know, the tutor said, I wanna to go to the graduation. And I said, hey, if they've got a graduation, go for it. Sure. Um, that's exciting when you can see those successes. Mm -hmm. Well, and I think I think that for programs like ours, mentors sometimes go into it, or or people, individuals sometimes go into the experience thinking, "Ooh, I don't know if I'm qualified." Like there's a big expectation of certain things like this, and and one of the things that we will have a focus on even more in depth this coming year is really kind of setting the stage and giving our volunteers a little bit more in depth peek into the circumstances and some of the, the details around um, what, what kind of makes or defines that at risk category. What does poverty look like? What does trauma look like? Um, what does it mean to be food insecure? And it's little wins uh, that um, that are that go a long way. We have a we have two 
uh, two things that have happened just in the last few months that I, that I think, you know, they're small to some, but signify huge wins and progress for, for what we consider in our outcomes. We have a boy, uh, a little brother in our program who um, had a run-in with the law. Um, he has a big brother that's he's been paired with for five years. And uh, he was uh, has has been spending time in a juvenile facility um, to have some restitution and counseling and things like that uh, to, you know, just kind of get himself back on track. And he and his big had a conversation and they've been matched for five years. So this was an, but this hadn't come up before. And they were talking about, you know, the little brother made a comment about how he knew that this probably was just a matter of time before he'd end up in jail. And the big brother said, well, why do you, you know, why do you say that? Well, that's what happens. That's what, that's what happens to, to boys and men, you know, and, and his brother and father and grandfather and uncles and every man in his life has been incarcerated is, or has been incarcerated at some point. And his big brother said, well, I've never been to jail. Well, what about your, nobody in my family's ever been to jail. And they had that moment together and the little brother really put the pieces together. And this was the first man in his life that he'd met that did not have that experience. And so he literally was able to put the pieces together at 13 years old and say, you mean I might not have to, that might not be how I have to live. And so they had a lengthy conversation after that. And the big, which is a testament to my team, of course, the big called us and said, holy cow, this conversation, I was doing it all wrong. There's, it's so easy. I had no idea. And so we had this conversation and, you know, the bottom line is we literally in that moment changed the trajectory or what that little boy believes is his trajectory for his future. There is something different for him out there because he just didn't have any exposure to a different kind of experience up to that point. And so that is, it seems so small because the outsider might say, well, he should have known, but if that's all you have is your own family experience and you're a child, um, you don't know any different. You don't see any different. And so that's just kind of exciting. I mean, that is, that's a story that in that moment, if they hadn't had that conversation, who knows what would have happened. But now that they have, we know we can support that. We can continue those conversations. We can, we can have that, um, we can break down that perception that has been guiding his decision-making and his own um, viewing himself in his own self-image. Uh, it's different now. That's exciting. I mean, it to, is exciting. To, to totally redirect and, and be able to reposition, you know, what the future is for that, for that little is just, mm -hmm. oh my God. Yeah. Uh, and it was, and it was so simple. And the big said, oh my gosh, I never thought I, I didn't even think I needed to talk about that kind of stuff, or I thought he would just know. And, and it's like, well, you know, they don't always know. Yes. They're still just kids. Um, and they're coming from environments that look different than many of our environments. And they, you know, many of the kids we serve, as I'm sure are in your program, they come from loving families. They come, we have a lot of kids in our program that have loving two parent households, but the parents are unemployed or underemployed. They're not around. They don't have a particular type of experience. Some of our parents um, had, didn't graduate from high school themselves. And so they would love for their child to have another adult friend that can show them what it looks like when you do graduate high school or go to college. Right. Um, and it's just, uh, you know, anybody can benefit from having um, another trusted voice, another trusted friend that can help show them uh, everything that might be possible for them. It totally changes the landscape and it totally, I mean, the possibilities are endless. Um, you know, and, and a real quick story that I was that very quiet, shy person. I did not talk to anybody. I never would have thought of doing something like this. And I ended up after serving uh, on some local leadership positions with the business and professional women, 
I ended up eventually being the state president for Wisconsin and had to serve on a national board of directors. Well, I had some incredible mentors that helped me. I mean, they, they would dress me, they would do my makeup, my hair. I mean, they would talk to me about what I was going to say, how I was going to say it. Um, you know, those mentors are absolutely priceless. So tell me, what do you have planned for this coming year? We're looking at launching a five-year pilot program, um, a brand new program, new to Sheboygan, not new to Big Brothers Big Sisters of America, um, but a technology-enhanced high school-focused uh, program that includes instructed curriculum on academic and career readiness in conjunction with uh, Inspire Sheboygan County and the principals and guidance counselors within the schools themselves. Um, and then the mentors, they connect through technology. So mentors are really kind of focused on uh, helping students with that self-exploration, um, helping facilitate and support that curriculum job at shadowing, job experience, career exploration, all that kind of thing. So the schools will identify students that are potentially at risk of not graduating or could benefit from a little bit of extra focus in that area. Um, and uh, many of them may be kids that potentially could have, probably should have been in our program a little earlier, but now they're, um, you know, this is something that they can benefit from. So we're excited about a five-year pilot there. Um, I think between all of us, if we all kind of come up with these things, we may have the capacity to, to affect change with all the kids that are out there and, and can benefit from it. Um, so we're excited about that. We'll be launching that pilot in September at Central High School in Shibu with the Sheboygan Area School District um, and Inspire Sheboygan County. They'll be a part of that. Uh, we are looking forward to leveraging um, an electronic learning system that our national organization has uh, put into place and really um, launching a library of resources for our bigs and littles and parents related to categories of things that can help um, mentors feel more confident and competent in their, uh, in their support, um, helping provide resources for strengthening families, looking at um, mindfulness exercises. We had a great partnership that we've designed with Mental Health America to bring mindfulness to our bigs and littles. Um, and, uh, and uh, looking at some potential growth in the company and in the service area that we look at, um, that's maybe a little bit uh, sooner on the horizon, but um, not, not quite having all the details ironed out yet, but looking at a, an expansion of our service area as well. Excellent, excellent. So if somebody wanted more information, what would you tell them? You can visit our website, bbbssc.org, uh, or give our office a call at 458-0111. The website has a lot of information about becoming a big, referring your child, because um, we always work, we work with families as well, um, about having youth enrolled, uh, our events, our different um, committees and teams, our board of directors, all the different ways that people can get involved. And together, we're going to make it an awesome, awesome, awesome community. Absolutely. Thank you very much for sharing your information with us. Um, for Horizons for Girls, definitely check out our website, horizons4girls.com. Lots of exciting ways to get involved, to make a difference. And that, to me, is what it's all about. So thanks for joining us. And I look forward to talking to everybody in a, probably about a month. Uh, and I hope you enjoy Ignite the Spark.